Hi, if you've been lucky enough to stumble across this video, which is all about how to do central heating control updates, then great, we're gonna go and look at that in a minute. Just beforehand, it'd be great if you guys, if you haven't yet, click on the subscribe button that's appearing in the corner now. That'll also be there throughout the whole video, so you can click subscribe on there anytime you like. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember to pop over to our Facebook and Twitter as well, where we put loads of plumbing disasters photos up that you guys send in to us, and I hope you enjoy the video. See you soon, guys. Plumberparts.co.uk honest reviews and advice. Hold tight and welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. My name's James and today we're gonna to have a look at how we're gonna update these controls behind us. We've got two different types of manufacturing controls at the moment and to be honest, the customer's not very happy with how they're working. The programmer at the moment is gone completely bats. Uh, it keeps bringing the hot water on and off, the heating on and off in the middle of the night. Uh, the screen keeps freezing out on it and the LCD on it is all sort of like gone funny. So basically we're going to change it over. Uh, we're going to pop a Drayton My Genie Wish 2 in. What that's going to do is wirelessly control the central heating system using this wireless thermostat here. We're going to replace the old programmer with this new Drayton programmer here. And then we're going to use Drayton's My Genie Gateway so all of this can communicate with your Apple or Android device so you can control the heating when you're away from home. This is particularly handy for the customer that we've got here today because this is actually in a pub, my local pub uh, and it's really handy for multiple people on multiple iOS devices to be able to control the heating in the hot water either while the landlord's away on holiday because he's lucky enough to own another place in Austria or if any of the staff need to alter the heating settings themselves using the iPad behind the bar or the iPad up in the house. The most difficult part of doing this sort of job is trying to figure out the old electrics. Now we're quite lucky here now we're quite lucky here because all the other engineers who have worked here in the past have left out all the wiring diagrams let's hope they followed them when they put it all in because you know no, a lot of them don't. Uh, I've already had a bit of a look behind here to see what we've got behind the box and that just in prep. And I'll be honest with you, it's just like any junction box you get on a heating system. You look at it and you're like, where, what, who, why? There's a blue cable there with a bit of red tape on it. So I must assume that it's live, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's the usual fun and jollity that we get in with all the while when it comes to electrics. So one thing I'm gonna say before we begin any of this sort of work, if you're not happy doing electrics, then do not do it. Get a qualified person to come in and do it for you. Always make sure that you have an electrical tester. Be sure that any terminal you're about to work on, you've tested and you're 100% sure is dead. We don't want no one dying here. But like I say, if you're not happy doing any electrics whatsoever, then it's very important you get an electrical engineer to come in. And even if you are happy doing it, you need to get an electrical engineer to come in and sign it off for you anyway. So anyway, let's have a look at this job now. I hope you enjoy it. It's gonna be a bit of a laugh. And uh, remember everyone, to hold tight. So let's get a basic understanding of what we've got here. This is the programmer here. So this is what we're gonna be changing first in the job. And as you can see, it's already mounted on top of the wiring center. So all our wires should only have to come through the back when we do this change over here. And just up there, we've got the receiver for the room thermostat, which is uh, this kind of type here. So there's two different manufacturers there. And then we've got what's called an S-plan system just here. Just there is the cylinder thermostat, which is gonna be the signal that tells this valve here to open and close and turn the pump and the boiler on according to whether all that needs to work. And then the room thermostat and the programmer as well will send a live to this one at a certain time because this is the two port valve that supplies. That's the radiators in the house. So to recap, we've got hot water valve there being controlled by that and the programmer and the radiator valves here being controlled by the thermostat and the programmer. So what I'm gonna do first is make sure that this is switched off. This is the switch here, but to make sure I'm gonna pop the fuse out as well. And also make sure that it's a three amp fuse because a lot of times engineers change these over to 13 amp fuses and they sometimes don't pop. So the one in here is a five amp fuse. So we're gonna to need to change that one over to a three amp when we're done. Right, so now we're pretty sure this is off. We can pull our old programmer off like so. And then we give, we've got the back plate on the back. Now this is a really important part of the job. You need to get your electrical tester out and just make sure that everything is dead. And a nice little handy tip as well. I always do this. Just get your camera phone if you've got it with you and just take a photo of the wiring layout that was there. If you haven't got your camera phone, then it's a good idea just to get a little bit of paper and actually write it out so you can remember it later on. That being said though, it's always worth remembering that the old wiring might have nothing to do with the new wiring. That's why we're not gonna show you the intricate bit that we're gonna do in a minute of changing the wiring over because whoever did this in the past is an imbecile. Um, so we're gonna try and sort it out a bit and make it a little bit better and we don't want you to see that. As ever, the main reason for that is that if we tell you how to do this particular heating system, that information might not transpose over to your heating system or any heating system that you might work on as a plumber or engineer. So I'm gonna pull this cover off here now. I'm gonna do all my electrical tests again, just to make sure. Then I'm gonna put our new back plate on, which just pops off the back 
like so, and then wire it up according to the manufacturer's instructions. But you're going to watch that in quick time. Enjoy! I will say it is one of those jobs though that you often sit on small screws and can't find them. <laughs> Right, so that's all taken out. And obviously, because Drayton's My Genie has the receiver for the wireless thermostat built into the programmer, you don't need a remote box like this that needs to be installed on the wall as well. So we get rid of that. So it's a very quick brief overview. We've got our neutral in, our live in, the main live that comes from, uh, from the fuse up top. Then we don't need to use a one and two on this because this is an S-band heating system and there doesn't need to be a satisfied live going back to a Y-plan valve. Uh, so all we've got is our live out for our hot water. This will go off to our hot water stat and then prove and then open up. We've actually got two wires on here because this pub's got two hot water tanks on it with two separate stats and two separate two port valves on there. But they want the tanks to come on and off at the same time. So when it comes to timing, we can just use the one timer on this programmer here. And then we've got the a live out for our central heating. This will only become live when the programmer is calling and also the room thermostat, the wireless room thermostat that comes with the programmer is calling. That will go live. That will send a live feed to the motor on the two port valve which will open and then make the micro switch in the two port valve which then gets the pump and the boiler working. So now we've got our new back plate on we should just be able to pop this down here like so and then screw that on underneath. Right then so now we've got this installed we can turn the power back on. So now we switch the power back on and any second now we should see that the Drayton comes on. There we go and as you can see at the moment it's saying no heating signal. That's because we need to put the batteries in our thermostat. It's really easy to do we just pop these back plates off like so and that'll expose where our batteries go. Uh, Drayton supply batteries as well with the pack so you can pop those in you should find that this pops on and then after about 30 seconds you should be able to go back to the programmer and see that they're talking to each other and that there's not a problem with the signal anymore once you've got them two talking together all you need to do is get your my genie gateway that you've got here there's a short ethernet lead supplied with the whole lot so you just pop that in the back of the my genie gateway and then pop the other end into the back of your router so we've got our router down here, so I'm just going to pop that in there. And then I'm going to plug in the power supply, which we've got just here, into the back of the My Genie. And then we should see that little light comes on just like that. So your setup should look a little bit like this. You've got your modem here with your Ethernet cable going to the back of the My Genie and the power supply going off to the transformer just over there. Now I know a lot of you saw the video that we've done before, but we'll just show you now. Now that you've got all that set up and everything's okay, I mean really it is kind of plug and play. Just flip this up the right way. Uh, and pretty much just go, let's get started. We'll put the name and address and the email of the customer into here and just follow the instructions of the setup guide. It's so easy. Right, now all I've got to do is pop over to the back of the gateway and press that little button. So there you go, it's saying press the back. All right, there we go, we've pressed the button now. And now all we do is wait for these two to talk to each other. There we go, all done. Now they're going to send a verification email over to us. So there we go, just click on that there. Confirm the email address. And there we go, all done. And as you can see in the background, this has already realised that we are confirmed and through. And that's it, all done. We've already done a video showing you how to do all the timing settings and everything like that, and it's really, really easy. In a couple of days, when the owners of the pub are back, I'm going to show them through how all this works. I might even get a free pint out of it, which would be even better. And that's it, really. This is the whole installation finished. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this plumparts.co.uk video. I've given you a very brief overview about how you can update your heating system controls. Remember all those bits of paper that we had stuffed in behind that controller there, all the instructions? You can get rid of them, because now you've got one one controller doing the whole job of two controllers earlier on and it's all in-house you don't even really need to have the instructions on the back because you can get the instructions down on the app here or at Drayton's website so I hope you've enjoyed today's video please follow us on Facebook and Twitter please do subscribe if you need any more help or any more information please comment in the comments section below and share this video with your mates and I'll see you all in our next video so there you go now you know how to update your heating controls and do everything from your iPhone or your iPad turn it on and off and all that sort of stuff remember everyone before the next video what are you gotta do you gotta hold tight i'll see you later guys thanks very much for watching plumberparts.co.uk honest reviews and advice